What's going on guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're having a look at the gyroscope on the device. So if I take my camera right here, we have a look at my phone, which is currently running through remote and is currently out of focus. Let's fix that. Whoa. Here it is. Over here, you can see that I'm moving the camera rotation with my phone. And that's what we're gonna be doing today, guys. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so as always, I will be showing you guys the scene we currently have right now. The scene is a simple one. I have a sphere um, with a rigid body on top of it and also have a cube. And <laughs> there's nothing more than that. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're going to hook up a gyroscope and um, make our cube, which is basically just a platform right now, we're gonna make it move with the gyroscope so we can move the sphere around with it. So a very simple use case of a gyroscope. Of course, we're going to need one big script that con controls it all. Um, I've called this one Garo Manager. So I'll create an empty game object, call it Garo Manager, and I'll drag and drop my script right on top of it. Now it won't work because my script is basically empty. So let me go ahead and quickly go through this one. So we're going to start with a public class with the same exact name as our script. Now this one is a model behavior because it's going to be sitting on top of an object. And then right after that, I'll put in the instance code, the exact same code we had for the audio manager. So this object, the Garo manager, is something that's going to be spawned if we need it. If we call Garo manager instance, it's going to be spawned on the spot. It's going to grab an existing instance if there's one in the scene, and if not, it will spawn one. Um, and you can always call instance from anywhere in your code. Okay, so that was my code basically just for the singleton aspect of this. You don't technically need this. If you can have just a hard reference, that also works. Um, but I don't know where I'm gonna be using it in my game, so might as well put it everywhere. Um, header logic right here are logic fields, things that we'll need. So we'll need the gyroscope itself, which is a class. We'll need the rotation, which is basically right now the rotation of your, your phone in your hand. So that's gonna be like the real world rotation of your phone. Um, and then I'm gonna have a boolean that just tells me, okay, is it active or not? Because sometimes it might, might not be active. Sometimes you might have a phone that does not have a gyroscope, so you don't wanna be running an update loop on something that doesn't work. But before we run this update loop, we need to enable our gyroscope. How do we do this? Well, we're gonna have a public function. This one I called it enable gyro, which I'll be calling from, you know, anywhere that I need my gyro. So that's, that's how I'll start up things. I'll say, hey, uh, gyro manager instance enable gyro. And then it's gonna check, is it already active? If it is, we don't need to enable it again. And then if it's not active, let's try and start it up. How do we try that? We grab the system info, support gyroscope, which is a Boolean that lets you know whether or not your phone has a gyroscope in it. And if it does, we're gonna say, okay, well, you know, assign gyro to input.gyro. It's gonna be stored right in here. And then we're gonna enable this thing. So every frame, we set the rotation to gyro.attitude now, we could technically just make this one public and call Garo the attitude from outside, but what happens is if, if we don't have Garo active, we don't have any wall to block us from going there, so uh, it's not really that cool. Um, also have a debug the lock here, which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Let's remove that. And finally, because this rotation is on private, I'm going to put myself a public function in which I can access that. Okay, so we now have the code that we need. I promise this is the code that you need. <laughs> Um, it's time to test it out because right now you can't really test out any of that. So here's what I'll do. I'll drag and drop my Garo manager and we'll create ourselves another script. This one I called follow Garo, and it's going to be something that just puts your object's position, your game object rotation on the same exact thing as your phone. So here is my script. It's going to be a fairly simple one. It's called follow Garo. We don't need these two. I have a base rotation, which um, we can modify to have a different rotation angle, which you'll see in a moment. Um, what I do is at the start, I make sure to enable Garo. And then on every frame, of course, we change the rotation, the local rotation. This is important as well. So we change the local rotation of this object by the Garo rotation times the base rotation. Okay, I said that word enough now. Let's go ahead and hook in our cube, which is basically our platform with follow Garo, just like this. And this is the time where you're going to need to hook in your Android remote, your Unity remote, sorry. And I'm going to boot this one up. Here it is. And it seems like I'm getting a no reference on Garo over here, which just makes a lot of sense. I don't know why I didn't catch that. Um, it should be inside of the if statement because Garo is not assigned if we don't go through this if statement. 
Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and run this once more, see if it works. I have a feeling that it might not work because of the order we're calling things. And as you can see, if I move my phone now, nope, we don't get anything. So here is how I will be solving this issue. So Unity is reopening right now. I have the Unity remote on my hands and on my hands, in my hands, and my scene is booting up right now as we speak. I should be able to just press on play and be able to have this right in the game. Now, um, remember that my follow gyro script is on top of my cube and, and uh, we have a gyro manager in the scene. So let's see. It is very hippy right now. It is on my device, so that's a very good start. However, I do get a problem where the gyro is not being affected. Maybe it's not even active. Just so I know, in case the support gyroscope is not enabled, in case it's not um, through, I've added myself a debug.log that says, hey, well, gyro is not supported on this device. And let's actually run this. I'm 100% sure that it is supported on my device. However, it uh, doesn't seem that way. Oh, wait. Okay, it works now. Nice. All right, so let me show you something, guys. This right here, approximately right here, over there, that's the north. You don't trust me because you don't live here, but I know. And if we're going over here, that should be east. And <laughs> I can tell with the rotation of this thing in my screen. So that is pointing towards, is it? No, that's, yeah, that's east over there. That's that way, yeah. Cool. So as you can see, we get a little bit of problem in here. We get a uh, weird behavior. If you want to test this out, I encourage you to take your device in your hand, just like I'm doing right now, and have your Unity open in your screen and just orient this in the way that you want. So you can tell exactly, okay, so which one is this rotation? Which one is that one? You can play around with the base rotation to have it work on different axes. So say, say I leave my phone towards the north, like this, it's flat on the ground and it's towards the north you can change the base rotation to have it point in other direction, as you can see over here on the right hand side. Now do know that you're modifying the local rotation, which means if you want to have something specific for your gameplay and you don't want to use those real world orientation like I'm using right now, you can always have an offset. You can always have like um, something above that, like so, because we're modifying the local rotation. So you can call it gyro container. Doesn't matter what you call it, to be honest. And say, I want this one to be in the middle. Yep, that's fine but I want this one to have a rotation of 90 and then 180. That's my parent object. And then beneath that, I'll put my cube or my platform in this case. Platform, put that beneath. And if we run this, now I should have something a little bit more manageable. Yep. So as you can see over here in the real life, I'm just holding this like with actual, you know, I'm pointing towards that way to hold the, the platform flat which is a little bit easier for me and it's it makes more sense in my game. Um, it's actually what I've used for my small preview that I've done in yesterday's video. So if we head back to our other scene, my start menu. So that's flat on the floor. Okay, that's totally fine. Now if I head over this way, wow, it makes a lot more sense. Here is my scene left and right. It's not technically moving in world space, it's just rotating. So you're not gonna see the scrolling and parallax work, but here it is. And do know that once you build this to your phone, it's actually not going to be as laggy. This is laggy because we're through remote, but if you head over here, this is a little bit less laggy. When you build it to your phone, it's going to be great. And that will conclude our gyroscope tutorial, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We are the 21st of March and we're about to be done in the week and a couple of days. And just you wait for what we're going to be doing in April, which is also going to be very cool. So subscribe to the channel. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Nice.